G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to take a look at the Runcam Swift. I've already looked at this camera, but I've heard a few reports of people saying it's a bit fragile, it doesn't hold up well in crashes. So we're going to take it apart, have a look inside and just see how well it's built and if there's anything you can do to increase its robustness. And getting it apart is pretty simple. There are two screws on the back, I've already taken them out, and the back cover just lifts off. And as you see in there, there's not a lot to see. It's all, you know, that's pretty fine. The construction seems good. The soldering is fine, but let's see what we find on the other side of this board. It's just a push fit into the plastic case, and we can take it out with the aid. There's our lens. We can take it out with the aid of some tweezers, and if we turn it over, let's take a closer look at what we see here. This is all the, the good bits. And the first thing I notice immediately, I notice, is this. This crystal here, this is a type of watch crystal type thing. And look, there's no support for that. It's just floating around in the breeze, which means vibration will eventually take its toll and these little fine wires down here that connect the crystal to the PC board, they will fracture. So the first thing we have to do is put a bit of hot snot on there, a bit of glue, a bit of hot glue or something just to hold that from vibrating because otherwise that will be the end of it. Now another thing I notice is that the CCD, the actual sensor unit here, is um, doesn't seem to have much in the way of protection from frontal impacts. I'm, once you've got this securely mounted in the plastic, it almost looks as if the CCD is touching the plastic inside there. It doesn't seem to be any sort of, yeah. So in a big impact, one of two things is going to happen. The G-forces on this unit here will put stress on these little soldered leads on the side, or the board will move forward and push the CCD hard against the plastic and cause some, again, some stress on these leads. So that's a bit of an issue, and I have seen video or pictures on the internet of these little pins being ripped off with impact. Now let's get it very clear that there's no one's going to make a completely bulletproof camera. There's no way you can make these things so that they will never be damaged in a crash. But I'm going to take a close look and see what we can do just to improve the toughness of this camera. Just before I do, however, I've noticed something interesting here. Notice that the sensor actually inside, inside this thing here, the sensor element, doesn't seem to be absolutely perfectly lined up. It's not directly square. It's slightly off to one side. It's not a big deal, but what it does mean is that your image from your camera will probably not be truly reflective of the camera angle. You, if you fly, let me see which way is top and bottom. We've got the, um, where's the connectors there? So these are top and bottom. So it's going to sit that way. So effectively, when you are actually flying so that the sensor is level, your model's going to be tilted slightly. Not a big thing, but I would have liked to have seen that dead square. I mean, yeah, it's only a degree or so, but you know, the perfectionist in me says, why can't it be straight? Now to toughen this up, what we'd have to do is provide some form of physical support for the wobbly bits. That's this crystal here and this CCD sensor here. Now you could use something like liquid tape, but that's really not very strong. It's not going to stop any major shocks. It'll stop vibration of the crystal, but it won't stop any real shock. I would be tempted to put some epoxy along here and along here so that we are providing extra support on these leads so they don't rip off the circuit board in the case of a big impact, and definitely some hot snot or epoxy on the crystal there. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do two cameras. I'm going to basically reinforce one, I'm going to leave the other unreinforced, and I'm just going to fly them around like I usually do, which will expose them to huge amounts of shock because of the way I tend to crash a lot. But it will at least give us a comparison between a beefed up camera and a non-beefed up camera. Also, it will expose whether Putting stuff on here is going to cause any problems performance-wise. It should not. Epoxy is pretty inert at these kind of voltages and these kind of frequencies, so I wouldn't expect to see a great deal of change in the camera's performance. But certainly, after a few knocks, crashes, and dings, I would expect the reinforced camera to still be going, while the one out of the box may not. Okay, I've just got some Hobby King epoxy, 15-minute epoxy, two-part, and I've mixed, put some bits out on this piece of plastic here. I'm going to stir them up. As always with epoxy, it's essential that you really mix it well. If you don't mix it well, it will not go off properly, and you should spend at least a minute mixing it. And, of course, if you've got 15-minute stuff, that's, uh, it's not going to go off in that period of time. But if you don't mix it properly, then it will never properly set. There'll be strands of unmixed resin or hardener in the resulting layup, which will cause the whole thing to be forever sticky. So you really need to get the mixing. And I find old mini quad props are just great for mixing up epoxy because uh, with the new unbreakable ones, these sort of become pretty much redundant. And of course, like most people, I bought a snot load of GM fan cheapy props when I started flying mini quads. And because I'm such an, a fantastic flyer, I've never broken one. Yeah, if you believe that. Um, righto, so I have mixed this up 
and I think that's going to be enough for the purposes of this demonstration. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply this to the area around the CCD where it joins onto the circuit board. So I'll pull in and get a tighter look at that. Here we go. Perhaps a prop isn't the best thing for putting it on with, but it's what I'll use. And I'll put on my granny glasses as well because I can't, I'm blind without them. So I'm going to try and do this without getting my ugly head in the frame. And without being able to see what I'm doing, I won't do it too much at once. So we'll just take a bit away. And I'll just try and get a bit on here along the edge of that. So here we go. Look at this. Beautiful. That's gorgeous. Let's put a bit along there. Just enough to give it some reinforcement. Here we go. I hope you can see that. Just a little blob of it there. You can see I put a bit of a thing. So this hopefully will provide some reinforcement on that side. I'll just turn it around and do the other side as well because we need to have both sides done or it'll just fall off. Here we go. Again, try and keep it in frame. Try and keep my head out of the shot. You might think, oh, if this breaks, you'll never be able to fix it. But let's face it, if this comes off, it's going to take PC traces with it, and you'd never be able to fix it anyway. So stop your worrying. There we go. Look at that. Epoxy on both sides. Now I'm hoping that this will still fit in the case when I'm finished. I haven't checked that, so maybe it won't fit. I'll we'll have to carve a bit away. But there's the epoxy. I will let that cure while I go and get the hot glue gun going so we can put this crystal in place. Why aren't I using epoxy for the crystal? Well, it's got a silicon type or plasticky rubber covering, maybe heat shrink. And epoxy will not stick very well to that, but I know that hot glue will. So, and also hot glue's got more flexibility. The benefit of having hot glue here is it will actually absorb a little bit of the vibration or the impact associated with normal operation. Epoxy won't uh, effectively absorb any because it becomes quite hard, quite rigid. So I will now heat up the glue gun and show you what it looks like when I've done that. So there we go, there's all the ruggedizing done. You can see the fillet of epoxy on each side of the CCD itself there and the little dab of hot glue here on the crystal. I haven't put it on both ends. As long as this end can't bounce up and down, you shouldn't really get any risk of those wires fracturing. Focus, focus camera, command focus. Have to get a manual focus on this one. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, that's all it takes to really ruggedize this thing. It now will be far, far less likely to be damaged by sudden impacts of the kind you get when racing mini quads. Only takes a few minutes to do this, but it can really extend the the lifetime of your camera. Little note of caution though, do not, do not, whatever you do, get anything on this piece of glass here because that will ruin your day. Because if you get hot glue or epoxy or fingerprints or dust on there, then your camera's gonna look like crap. The image coming out of the camera will be terrible. So do it carefully, just take your time. And if you do it right, then you've basically made a much stronger camera. The front cam Swift seems to work really well. I like this camera, it's really nice, but they really overlooked the ruggedizing thing when they designed it. Hopefully this will be much tougher and stronger. I will report back after I have done a few of my normal heavy landings and smacked into stuff and let you know how it worked. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. Now I will put this camera back together, throw it in the mini quad and do my best to bash the snot out of it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.